Okay, right, I'm just going to introduce you now. So, um, welcome again to BOPT 2021 conference. So, uh, on Saturday, third day now. And this is a special evening session uh, for our people who are presenting from Down Under. We've got Terry Conlon now, who's joining from Australia with 100 years of what type can teach us as writers. Thank you, and take it away, Kent, Terry. Thanks so much, Richard. And it's lovely to be here um, this morning. It's 6 a.m. here in Sydney and a great uh, pleasure to be with you presenting on what 100 years of type can teach us as writers. Uh, so this uh, picture here is uh, where I'm coming from in Sydney. This is um, from the deck where I live, looking out across the water to um, Sydney, the city. On a good day, it's where I choose to write and work and it's a really beautiful place to, um, to create. So. Um, yeah, our focus today is um, around um, writing 100 years of type and uh, just a little bit about our journey, personal journeys. And we're particularly focusing on writing as a personal psychological journey and how our type insights can help us uh, with this. So um, here's what we'll run through. A little uh, snapshot of insights from 100 years of type. We'll have a look at um, some writing process skills and models that I think are really useful for looking at types. Some come, most come from the type field, others are from a related field, but they dovetail really well with type. Um, I'll share a bit about my personal writing journey and I'll encourage you through discussion to share about your writing experiences and type and sort of co-create some information together. Um, we'll tie up some preferences, cognitive gears, strategies, tips uh, for writing, and uh, a takeaway for you, something I think to take some ideas from today and then take away and work further on is an action plan for you as a writer. So that's how uh, we were heading. So yeah, let me know in the comments why you decided to join me today. I'd love to hear a little bit about um, what your interests might be in writing, if you are um, a keen writer or it's just something you haven't uh, thought about a lot. I'd love to hear a little bit about where you're coming from and why you're doing that. I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, so who am I? Why am I interested in uh, this topic? Uh, what do I bring to the topic? Here's a little bit about me. So the main thing is I'm passionate about it. So I am a writer. I'm long interested in writing, a life coach and a personality type practitioner. My business is called Quiet Writing. So that says a lot about my passions and also a lot about my personality type, which is INTJ. Uh, so I'm a teacher of literacy, literacy and writing in adult education, um, adult vocational further education by background and a leader in that sector for a long time, for 30 years. So about half of that time was teaching and the other half was leading in the sector. And I have the personal, um, my personal writing experience as a blogger of 10 plus years and also um, writing a book, Wholehearted Self-Leadership for Women in Transition and a companion workbook that's coming out in September. Uh, this year. So that whole experience over four years has been a really um, huge journey into that writing process and a personal psychological journey. So you can see on the screen there, that's my notes from 18th of February 2017, uh, when I just brainstormed what this topic might be about, um, a few pages, and that has now become a book. This is the cover um, and the book itself and a companion workbook are all um, basically with the book designer at the moment ready to be um, published. So that whole journey was um, really what sparked my interest in how type fits with that. And thanks to everyone who's popped in. So we've got um, a writer of poetry. That's great, Jerry, Jerry with, a um, with a complex after doing an English degree. Uh, Chris writes articles and poetry. I know... Um, Julie here doing a session tomorrow, which sounds really fascinating on micro memoir. Uh, Catherine with her nonfiction, um, writing as therapy, great point there, um, Yasek. And uh, Brenda says, wanting to write more, feel stuck at home and how to get unstuck faster. So thank you for that. I think um, all the writing that we have, uh, writing experience in the group, we'll do a quick poll in a minute too to capture that. Oh, so here's the poll. Okay, so um, Richard will bring up the poll. So just interested in who we have in the room got a little sense of that from the chat. So um, we're interested in, you know, how would you describe yourself as a writer? Choose the best description for you. So um, are you an author, an aspiring author, a writer, as in, you know, regularly writing, but perhaps not um, publishing so much, a writer for work, an incidental writer, as in you don't write much out of choice, but it's part of what you do, or a reluctant writer in that you don't like writing much at all.
seven people respond so far. Anyone else? Great. Thank you. No, no. I end it. Seven people. Well, I. There's missing some options. <laughs> yes, it's just a bit of a rough poll. What would you <laughs> yes, add? Yes, yes. What okay. would you add, Kaj? All right. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to write more, um, uh -huh. uh, but I don't. I don't write um, uh, fiction or so. Uh, but I would like to do that. Uh, yeah. So I took some courses and so. But then I work uh, writing work, but unfortunately, too little. So therefore, it's lovely to take part yeah. in this. So it's oh, great. great. Thank you. No, that's great input. So you could be an aspiring author, I, I think, from what you said there, working on a book right. or thinking about a book and uh, written extensively. So we have 22% roughly in the author aspiring ones. That's fantastic. So we've got nearly half the people here. Um, and when we add in the writer, 66% of people who are really um, interested as authors and writers, uh, we have um, a few in the bottom, uh, not bottom, but bottom as I look at it, uh, reluctant uh, in that not writing much at all, avoid it, and incidental writer. So wherever you are in that um, journey, I think there'll be something here for you. So um, it'll be an opportunity to take where you are further and be able to shift through, um, get some insights from type on that. So thank you for that. Uh, so Anne Janser is an author who's written a great book called The Writer's Process that I'll be drawing from a little bit today. And um, her book is about um, the cognitive science behind writing. So whilst it's not specifically on type, it dovetails quite nicely with, um, with type. And she says um, that we hone the craft of writing through practice, which, you know, as most writers, writers among us will know, um, it doesn't arise from understanding the mind alone, but the practice is easier and more enjoyable when you approach it in a way that complements your mind's behaviour. And that's what we want to focus on today is how to complement our type, the way our mind works, um, understand a little bit more about that and work with it rather than against it. So there's three aspects of writing that um, we want or we, the experience of writing to be and what we want to draw on. So creativity, being creative is a key part of our writing journey. That idea of, you know, how we draw on our sources, connect ideas, perhaps move beyond the conscious mind, being original, creative. So creative is the first thing we want from our writing experiences and our writing process. The second is we want to be productive. It's all great to have those creative ideas, but we've got to do something with them. We've got to get our butt in the chair, as they say, uh, make progress, manage procrastination, deal with blocks, metrics. You can see there that my little numbers are actually counting words. So, you know, how do we drive ourselves with metrics? show up to the page, schedule, manage deadlines. And the third, which I think often gets forgotten, is that we want writing to be enjoyable. So it's about being in a positive environment, um, having a mindset where we're in flow. What does that feel and look like? Um, being easeful, being in the moment and feeling competent about it. So there's some areas we'll touch on too. So let's just uh, head into what um, type learning over the 100 years uh, can help us uh, with that being creative, productive and enjoyable as writers. So um, I just want to acknowledge at this point to um, Peter Geyer, who is the custodian of the Type Research and Practice Collection in Australia and um, a very experienced and noted uh, researcher and um, teacher of type. And he was uh, helped me with sourcing information. Here's just some of those books that I've drawn on and um, with uh, articles on uh, research and types. I just wanted to thank Peter at this point for his support. So you have a pre-reading guide. I popped the link up the top in the um, chat box there. If you need it, it's in the hub as well. So this pre-reading and session guide, it's about 12 pages, zeroes you into the topic, but at the back there's a reference list too about um, lots of different uh, research on type, key elements on writing and type. And it's um, just, I just pulled out the things that I found really helpful and useful. So you have that there. There is a specific body of um, work in personality and writing. So that's really helpful for us. So just before we look at that specific body, I thought too, in my own thinking about, um, or our, our thinking too, about learn, write, writing and type, let's just think about how we might um, draw on the broader influences in the field. So this is just a list of the key areas that have um, fed into my thinking about writing and type. So we have psychological types, obviously, the reason why we're here at this conference, uh, 100 years of type, um, Jung's work on preferences and functions. The attitudes, introversion and extroversion are very interesting in relation to writing, 
how we approach writing and also our judging and perceiving processes. Um, Myers and Briggs work with the preferences and particularly their work on um, judging and perceiving and the you know, developing that into attitudes, that sense of how those um, functions play out. The majors um, is an area that I'm trained in uh, and use with clients and that whole area with the pers uh, personality type inventory and elements and looking at the eight Jungian function scores can be really helpful just to see um, how the um, func the functions are actually playing out and I'm going to share mine with you and you can have a look at how that might fit with my writing in a moment. Um, John Beebe, his work on consciousness, what's in and out of consciousness, the spines and arms model um, is quite, it's very helpful and the shadows of type. Dario's work on neuroscience, um, self-leadership and priming, that idea of how we stretch into the other, um, other aspects of type. Um, Jane Kesey and Anne Holmes work on type and saboteurs, and I know they did a session for this conference on nature nurture, which um, will develop that area further, but based on the positive psychology area is really helpful. And Mina Baramani's work on the hierarchy of preferences. So some of these things we'll touch on as I go through. Um, they've been influences for me and I think help get um, a context for writing and type. But oh, there is a body of work on writing and type. There's a great body of work. So most, it's mostly around the 80s and 90s. Uh, and this book, um, this, well, this series of pieces of work from John uh, K. D. Tiberia and George H. Jensen are really uh, fascinating bodies of work. And from those pieces of work, lots of other pieces have happened around research and writing and um, different uh, workbooks that have been developed. So uh, those three pieces there. And if uh, the handout that I've shared with you um, in the comments and also through the hub is um, Peter Guy's summary of approaches to writing, which um, I was going to summarize the key points from the book and how it affects our approaches. And Peter had already done that work. So he shared that with me and with permission, I share it with you. So um, that's a great, great place. And we'll have a look at some of these concepts as we go through. And Loomis has a fantastic practical uh, workbook called Right From The Start. So it's based on that work by um, Dieter Berry and Jensen. But it takes us through the practicalities of um, okay. writing and how that works. So uh, that's a really great place to work from. We have in that book the Loomis Grand Staff Writing Inventory. So it's a little inventory that takes us through type and um, how it interacts with writing. And there's a writing profile of each type. And she has a, a four stages of writing process um, in that book, which I'll go through in a moment. So the ones with little asterisks, I'll take you through a little bit more detail. We can have a bit of a chat about. Uh, Creative You by David um, Goldstein and Otto Kroger in 2013. It's a body of work more about creativity more generally, but it's a fantastic book. As a writer, I found it really helpful. So it's about type and artists, writers, creative, lots of lovely examples of different writers and creatives in there. And uh, he talks about 16 creative types, talks about a glass slipper of creativity. And there's just a couple of examples there. And uh, this book, uh, which is a fairly recent one, 2016, it's not specifically a type book, but it's based in the cognitive science area. So it's around behavioral economics, uh, psychology, and um, the idea of cognitive uh, behavior. And Anne Jans is, is a writer by background and she's bought this uh, body of work together really well in this book, uh, which I've found very helpful. And she has concepts around the muse and the scribe and an inner collaboration, which I'll talk you through, and a seven step writing process. Okay, so um, just as we move through onto writing process skills, just check my so I'm just going to just talk you through a few brief um, models, just a little bit about skill, writing skills, a little bit about some models that come from the type and aligned world. So you can see here, this is just a brainstorm I did on all the different skills involved in writing there. And uh, you might see some that jump out to you where you think, well, that's, that's a really, um, you know, if you think about scheduling, what sort of um, cognitive skills or Aspects of type, preferences might be, you know, who might be a great scheduler. Um, note making, editing, proofreading. Perhaps just pop in the comments anything that pops out to you and perhaps, you know, what sort of preference you think might be really good at that or what type might be really good at those skills Where, or what are they linked together? What sort of cognitive skills might you be using when you're, who'd be a good proofreader or what cognitive 
um, function might be a good um, fit for um, note making, for example, or editing. Just see if anything pops out for people. Or ones you look at and go, oh, I hate that. Just looking at this list, you can just see how many different cognitive processes are actually involved in writing. And that whole process of going for me on a four year journey um, of writing a book has just meant going through lots of different um, mental states and mental processes. Uh, so David says an INTP proofreading is a strength, uh, scheduling not so much, great. So you can see straight away that eye for detail. Uh, Jerry says not keen on scheduling for writing, although I'm really good at it for work. That's a great comment, Jerry, about different contexts and how we can bring our skills into different, um, to play in different areas. Um, Richard, uh, well, extroverted intuition, brainstorming is an obvious one. Yeah. And uh, for me, I'll, I'll show you mine in a moment, but my, I found my introverted intuition, extroverted intuition was working really strongly together as someone with introverted um, intuition, INTJ preferences. Uh, Chris says, I can proofread once if it's interesting, but I go blind to my own errors. Oh, that's interesting. So, um, yeah, I think that just different ways we can, different contexts, different cognitive uh, strengths that we bring. Uh, and Chris says, I certainly don't plan or schedule my writing unless it's to set aside time for a workshop. Great. So, and we'll have a chat in a moment about um, different preferences for planning versus um, not planning. And all of us have those preferences and some of it will be related to our you know, psychological preferences. Others may be other aspects as well. Uh, Catherine says, I like researching, but get overwhelmed with information. Yes. So part of um, the, you know, the processing process is, you know, here's all the information, but when do we sort of um, shut it down or, or start to gather it and then move on with the, the work? So all of that is um, part of that input. Okay, so here's some key messages from D. Tiberio, and thank you for that, folks. Here's some key messages from um, D. Tiberio and Jensen. So they say, or their key theme in this book, that every personality type has its own strengths and limitations. Extroverted, introverted ways to begin drafts and revise, for example. And I think that's really interesting. We don't always think that um, we go about drafting or revising in a particular way, or we just, you know, it's idiosyncratic to us. But we can actually see through the research and literature that there are extroverted and introverted ways to begin drafts and to revise them. And their advice is to understand our natural style, our limitations, our context in that process. So here's an example taken from Dieter and Jensen. Um, for extroversion, active writers, the tendency is to do that leaping into writing. Um, to outline sometimes after the first draft. So do the first draft and the, people often call it a reverse outline, then work out what it was about once you've sort of got the information out there. Um, writing from lived experience, talking out ideas. There's a fascinating piece of research about resume writing and it just showed the difference with how people went into working on resumes. The extroverts really love to talk, talk, talk a lot about what they wanted to write about and then put it down. For introverts to talking with other people maybe a long way down the process um, and taking breaks for out of stimulation. Uh, for introverts, reflective writers, it's about thinking um, before writing, jotting down ideas, working from inner reflection, writing ideas before talking and pausing to think ahead. So um, yeah, again, just pop down in the chat box if you tend to, in the, in the genre of novel writing and probably in other areas, they talk about pantsers versus plotters. So pantsers are people who fly by the seat of their pants and plotters are those who tend to plot um, the process. So have a think about whether you're likely you're your, your type and your preferences and whether you're more likely to be an outliner or a um, someone who doesn't need to outline but likes to work from um, experience or talking out ideas. Uh, Catherine says, uh, I need to outline whole structure first before I can write. Yeah, and that's definitely my preference too as an INTJ. I like to see the whole uh, before I can um, do the work. Uh, Jer Jerry, definitely reflective, but often a draft works best if I can just leap into it. Yeah. Uh, Julie, I do mind maps, not outlines. Great. Yeah, so there's lots of different ways. And, and a mind map can be just another way of getting that sense of what the whole looks like. Uh, Chris, I might outline an article, but a poem is more organic. Yes, different types of writing will, will influence uh, how we work through that. Uh, Brenda, she likes mind maps. I uh, feel I should do outlines. Yeah, I mean, you can often go from one to the other, different ways of doing that. 
Uh, Jim says, put the story in my head first. Yeah, that's INFP. Um, Catherine also says, I work out my ideas during writing. So I think that sort of um, working from inner reflection, perhaps coming out there starting, but working from that. Uh, Richard says, I tend to reflect a lot, then write an almost finished document in one go. Yes, that's um, often the case, I think, with NT writers, particularly INTJ and INFJ. And you'll see um, in that summary of approaches to writing from um, Peter Geyer, there's just some examples there of what each of the 16 types looks like. Uh, David says, like Catherine and same type, um, write to work out ideas. And Jerry, yes, it can be an idea, mulls around for ages then comes out. Uh, Karge says, enjoy sketching to build up. Oh, that's great, to build up the um, story. Um, Yes, and Catherine just says back to David, I often don't understand something until I write about it. So often that idea of just like discovery writing, people might call it too. So you can see already just the differences in the different styles and approaches. So some of the key, another key message from D. Tabira and um, Jensen is writers become anxious or emotionally blocked when they overuse one process or neg neglect its opposite. So that idea that Darren Nadi, I think, believe talked about at this conference of one-sidedness, if we... If we're just using one process, we often can't move on and we get blocked. But if we bring in the opposite, particularly later in the stage when we need to stretch, that helps us. So um, Anne Loomis in her book talks about writing as building a house. I just want to share a couple of models for you just to help your thinking. Um, so in Anne, L Anne Loomis's book, she talks about um, the dreamer stage, the first stage that some of, some of you have mentioned, the free writing clustering, that mind mapping would come in there. Uh, the designer where we get the big picture, organizing, the ordering, the layout, the framework. And she encourages, it's based on the work and research of um, that's come before from D. Tabera and Jensen, to rely on our preferences in the start, in the dreamer and the designer stages, and to keep the inner critic quiet. And I think that's a really great um, way of looking at it. In the builder stage, we start adding the content, constructing, um, putting together, doing, doing a bit more with it. That's when our less preferred and opposite functions are a really good um, stage to bring those in. So start with the dominant, start with our preferred, work with those, and then see what um, you can bring in by, by stretching out in a different way. And she mentions in her book, she has a particular section on sensing and intuition, just noticing, I guess, that perceiving function of how we take in information can be a particular gap and a great one for us to address. And then the inspector, I guess this is where the proofreading comes in, the refining, the polishing, the scrutinizing, and it's the inner critic time. And this is a time when we want to use our preferences and our non-preferences together. So um, I think that idea of a flow through, um, what, whether our writing is you know, a shorter piece or a longer journey, I think this model of preferences, non-preferences, and then bringing them together towards the end is a great model. In Anne Jansen's book, she talks about the scribe and the muse, which I find really interesting. And she, while she doesn't relate this to type, it's about mental gears. And I, I think it actually translates quite well to um, the idea of um, how our cognitive processes are working as we write. So the scribe, she says, is that focused attention. And you can, if you think of those um, writing processes I mentioned earlier, um, you'll see some of those naturally fit into this area, proofreading, for example, research, outlining revision, uh, when we want to use the scribe. The muse is that more wide ranging sort of um, creative attention and it includes periods of rest and incubation. And she stresses that non-writing is as important as writing. And drafting that sort of, I guess, the, the guts of the process, the, the, the sort of where the rubber hits the road is ideally when the muse and the scribe are in a state of flow. And it, just like um, Anne Loomis talks about it as being a house, building a house, uh, Anne Jansen describes it like breaking bread, which I think is a lovely analogy too. And she shows this shift between the scribe and the muse. So research is the scribe, letting the idea incubate is the muse. And she uses that example of, you know, the yeast and the kneading the bread and letting it rise. And um, when we're writing the first draft, we want the two working together. When we're resting before revision, the scribe rests and the muse may choose to return. And then as we move through, the scribe sort of takes the lead as we move into those more revisionary uh, parts of the process. And I, it made me think and welcome your thoughts on what you're seeing from this, but um, it sounds to me like the scribe is very much that 
feels like the judging functions to me anyway around making decisions. You know, what's in, what's out? When do I stop researching? When do I start outlining? What does a revision look like? And the muse feels very much like those perceiving functions of, you know, going for a walk, taking in information, um, letting things rest, seeing what comes in. Uh, and in that drafting state, ideally, it's the muse and scribe in a state of flow coming together. So um, uh, Jerry mentions the muse is a little girl by Marjorie Sasser. It's a great little poem. Thank you. That's a great um, read. But um, yeah, welcome your thoughts. You can perhaps chat about it when we break into the breakout group shortly about whether you see that, you know, how the scribe and the muse relate. But that that was sort of feeling um, like those mental gears were like aligned to those functions I went through. So here's a little um, about my personal journey and then we'll go into some breakout groups and you can work through the questions and um, see how it fits for yourself. So as I mentioned, my journey over the last four years of moving from this um, outline to a fairly um, more fully formed book is what, you know, that whole psychological journey and that process is what we're talking about. So in February to May of 2017, that's when I did all that mind mapping, that overall outline. And that very much felt like the introverted intuition, extroverted intuition, thinking of both kinds and the muse and the scribe of it working together at that stage. In June, it was very much about um, structured overview, transferring to Scrivener software. I don't know if anyone's used that, but it enables you to really structure your writing. And for me, as a someone with extroverted thinking tendencies, I like the structure. I like to um, you know, have it organised with my introverted intuition. I like to see the whole. Um, for July to October, there was sort of um, early drafting and I worked with coaches, which helped me a lot to break through some of those initial barriers to get started. And I think it was a lot about, you know, working out my why, what was important to me, the introverted, um, that should be introverted uh, feeling. Um, that whole piece around um, you know, why things are important and connecting with others. But then the real um, guts of the work happened in November 2017 when I wrote 50,000 words in a month. NaNoWriMo is for writing novels, a worldwide novel writing um, way of getting words down, but I used that structure to get my nonfiction draft. Very much introverted intuition, extroverted thinking, and it felt like being in flow in a structured way. And then from December 17 through next few months, I completed the draft, did a few run-throughs, uh, which was, again, was that musing and scribing. I went to a writing retreat in Hoi An, which is very much the muse. So for me, that was, you know, working out why writing was important, connecting with others, and a, and a lovely break in the process. Then there was a long incubation period where I um, had to work out you know, where this fit, what to do with it, how to publish, how did I want to publish? And that was mainly the muse, I think, just adding more detail, seeing what was coming in. Um, June, so Catherine said that you did not write a terrible novel. <laughs> well, that's great you did NaNoWriMo, Catherine, but often just just writing, I think, breaks us through to that next um, next stage. So, yeah, it can be, can be tricky. Uh, June 2019 to August 2020 was when I reached out and worked with a developmental editor and published publisher on intensive editing and that was very much um, extroverted feeling and the scribe and you know working with others that was really hard for me to do so um, I think you know just seeing how those later later stages of the process and my other functions are coming into play uh, September last year and into this year has been working re working with independent publisher on the drafts, copy editing, publishing, proofreading, and all of that has felt very um, scribe oriented. Um, Chris said she did Nano Nano Rhymo, which um, was a poetry version. Great, it's a great way for getting started to write um, a really good good tool. So you can see from my personality map as an INTJ how those functions were sort of coming into play, um, particularly my lead function and the others coming behind and sometimes just needing to, to bring in particularly a tertiary and inferior. But if you have a look at my major scores, have a look and see what you see there. Welcome, any comments in the chat box? The tricycle, Chris says, yeah. <laughs> I actually think it's maybe the um, the quad 
quad bike <laughs> um, in Mina Baramani's model. So um, that idea of um, we use our introverted intuition, extroverted intuition, um, the, the top two in both, um, in both attitudes coming out there. And I certainly felt that that was how it felt in this writing process. Um, what's Spotter's model, David? Do you want to pop off mute and just explain it briefly? Uh, yeah, Cash Kihi is uh, presenting at this conference on oh. uh, Spotter's model, and it, it's it's this pattern that you you have those two top uh, uh, functions in both attitudes in the first half of life, essentially, and mm -hmm. then get to, uh, these to these lower ones uh, in the second second half. Yeah, but it, yeah, similarly to to Nina's uh, work and, and that same same vein. Yeah, exactly. And it's fascinating to see how it comes out. And I did, I actually did the um, Myers inventory and then the um, elements, it was actually in the same month. I just went back to my records and all around the same time. And they were pretty much the same. Some of the introverted, extroverted ones were just shuffled, but it was quite consistent. And I think, um, yeah, like a sandwich, as Chris says. But I think it sort of shows to me too how it played out for me in my writing is that the natural pieces, the mind mapping, the shaping and outline, the visioning, working independently is a very, you know, I'm a very independent person. I'll, you know, keep going for a long time before I ask for help. <laughs> um, first draft, working to a structure, fine tuning, showing it all felt like this, you know, things which when I look back at my um, majors were really strong, that introverted intuition, extroverted, and shifting attitudes like, you know, opening things up, bringing them um, back down, brainstorming, then working out how it fit. So it's that, I think it's a little bit that scribe and muse that Anne Jance is talking about too. Um, and what was more challenging for me is that um, reaching out for help is quite hard. Um, but that, again, that's that extroverted feeling and, you know, connecting with others and um, that sort of side of the world that's not as natural, I guess, that extroverted side of writing versus introverted Realizing I couldn't do it on myself, taking on others' visions when you when you um, have a developmental editor. And my first thing, my developmental editor said to me, "This is actually two books," which was like, and and it has become two books. <laughs> but it's that you know, just realizing what you have is actually something different by reaching out to others is a really important step in the process. Um, concrete examples in my editing, well, you know, I had a hundred thousand word draft uh, in the end to into two books and a big process was putting in the concrete examples which is the more sensing side of the world the long haul of the editing process the big changes and get, I got really impatient at times <laughs> as I'm sure people do when they go through the long haul process uh, Chris comments your comment explains why I've never really got the hang of mind mapping that sounds great yeah so um, yeah I think for all of us we'll have our natural tendencies to um, focus us and that's what we'll you know, help us on the journey is just to have a think about that. So what I'd like you to do now is just to pop into some breakout groups and just have the opportunity to have a conversation. Um, and I'll just pop in the comments, just one minute, I'll just copy it, um, the questions for you so you have them because as we know, when you go back to... Um, the doing two things at once when you go back to um, the chat room it's hard to be able to pop them in so you see my screen up just stop the share for one minute so I can see oh, there we are. I lost my chat box there you go so there's two um Handouts there. So one is the questions, and there's six questions. So feel free to just concentrate on one or two, or you know, work through all, whatever works for you. But I'll take you through a similar process that I went through. What are the strengths? What are the um, you know, what's what's less likely to be helpful? Uh, where might the blocks be? And then there's um, the second one is just a type reference with the eight functions, which is from Hartz and Hartz, but it can be quite a good reference when you're chatting and people are of different type to you, just to see where they're fitting. Okay, so any questions before we pop into the group? Cool, okay. So... Um, Harry, just remind me, how, because of how many people are here, how big do you want the groups? 
Um, I don't know. Well, the other option is we just do it all together and we don't break into groups because we're only, it's only 13 of us. What would you prefer, folks? That sounds great to me. Yeah, well, we're, we're a small group, so that might be easier. I can share the screen and um, bring up. You've all got the questions there? Then I can hear you because probably we go into groups as I can't hear everyone. So is that okay with you, Richard? Cool. Okay, well, who'd like to start? We've got our first question. Let me just get one in front of me. Which is about our um, which aspects? We've got about ten minutes here, but um, given we're bringing this together with our feedback, we can probably take about, 15, about yeah twelve to fifteen minutes, which is great. So, um, which aspects of the writing process have felt easier or more natural for you? Who'd like to kick us off with that? It's lovely. I can see everyone's faces now. Too. Well, certainly the the researching part is uh, is just lovely for me. Uh, it's, it's probably why I haven't actually produced any uh, any books. Uh, uh, I got into type, and then I got into young, and now I'm working on a PhD, and I just keep on going deeper and deeper. Um, and so yeah, uh, it's lovely. It's not particularly productive, but uh, it's fascinating. Yeah, and that's a, a great strength for you as an INTP is that ability to go deep and. Um, and do the research so and enjoy it and then we talked about creativity productivity enjoyment you know, a lot of yeah. a lot of people wouldn't enjoy that process but you do which is great mm. yeah, okay. i appreciate you highlighting the enjoyment part of it uh someone had mentioned maybe sketching i i, I have started kind of doodling and drawing and doing some painting work so really getting outside of that more linear rational model has been real real helpful for me yeah exactly yeah and I think it's great too to try different things because my natural bent is I do mind maps. I guess that's my extrovert intuition, but I do tend to get very quickly into the linear. So if I can do a collage or something completely different, it'll often bring something new in. So great. Okay. Um, who else would like to share about their what they find easier or more natural? I think it's the for me it's the kind of synthesizing the bringing together of stuff. So that I mean that's classic introverted intuition. I think the way you sort of suddenly realize this is that ah oh, okay and that's how they fit to, that, that's how those two images fit together or those two pictures fit together. So that's the bit that's really fun uh, and where I feel in flow when I get there. Yeah, no great. And as a fellow INTJ, I relate to that <laughs> for sure. It's that um, yeah, Dave, uh, Richard. Yeah, I, I join the INTJ group. I mean, it, it's for me, yeah, it's easy coming up with something original and like some kind of big like idea, but like then actually evidencing it is harder. Mm, yes. <laughs> it's always saying like we have to go backwards, like we, we come up with the final solution, then we have to go back and reconstruct the argument using other functions of how we would have got there using them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Put the put the pay, put the steps in place, <laughs> Chris. You're on mute, Chris. Yes, uh, I realized that, that what I found inspiring is uh, because I had some struggles to write before, and I uh, write on computer or paper and, uh, and pencil. And what I found was really helpful for me was to actually use the phone, the iPhone with the notes. So when I'm walking in kind of nature or somewhere, I can, act, I can actually write much faster uh, and play with words in a completely different way that, that I can do when I'm actually sitting down at the desk. Mm. So that helps me a lot. And then I can rearrange text when you know, you send away those notes to your, uh, I mean, you can put it into a, a uh, like in Word, and then you can rearrange texts and so. So it's kind of yeah. building text. So I found that very helpful for me. Yeah, that's great. And, I, and it sounds too like it being outside in nature and uh, yeah. walking. Oh, well, or bit. in a city or anywhere where you can get inspired, so. Yeah. Good, I think the, the main thing is that I walk when I do this. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, and there's a, there's quite a lot of people who who use dictaphones too, and um, you know, I've got a little Sony, dict yeah. the old dictaphones, and people can write whole novels that way. So that might be a way in for you, Kaj, use your strength to just 
you know, talk the novel out when you're walking. Like you say, you can, you know, get on or you use your phone. But that's yeah. Um, yeah. And it's so that's stupid true. because I can't write on a typewriter. So I use my thumbs like that, and yeah. it's much easier for me. Yeah. No, there's lots of <laughs> that's good. <laughs> try the try the dictaphone. Chris, you're gonna say something. I find that I'll have a a thought or something that matters that I'm trying to, to shape. And if phrases come to me when I'm doing something else, I put them in my phone, mm. not by voice, but I put them in a, a notepad in my phone. And yep. then when I get a chance, I collect up my fragments and look for patterns and how they're coming together, look in a thesaurus for more patterns that might connect and then just kind of gradually shape it and come up with something mm. and then rewrite it and it rewrites differently <laughs> and I know it's more or less come right when I rewrite it and it's not changing anymore ah well that sounds really beautifully organic the way it um, yeah yeah that's great anyone it else when I was writing with pen and paper but it's it's still okay electronically <laughs> yeah yeah, for sure. Anyone else got any comments on what they find more easy or natural before we move on what's harder? Interesting comment on some of the INTJ uh, and I. Um, several presentations from INTPs to this, this week have been like, this, 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 and then they're like, and then, so I actually looked up the, the definition and, and inevitably it's the INTPs and I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> working through uh, psychological types which has the definitions at the back uh, and I find myself just just today even just being in those definitions, uh, seeing a Crawford reference go into a different definition of what they mean by you know, idea or archetype and kind of sifting back and forth. And it, and it seems like it's kind of the opposite of the NI, like I've got the big picture. It's like I'm hmm. working through these these pieces and kind of building up um, more yeah. to, to, I find that interesting from just this discussion. Yeah, no, it oh. is. There was, a, there was a nice discussion the other day. It was... Um, Heidi Preby on social media and she talked about the difference between NI and NE and the big thing she said was for NI it was the big having the big picture and then going that way whereas the NE was the going out almost almost I don't know different different sort of process Does that ring true for you Catherine you're nodding it does but what I was just thinking when you said that was that sometimes an idea just comes to me but I think that's when I've already done that NE bit Mm. And then suddenly it forms and I suddenly realise how I need to say it or what I need to do with it. Yeah. Um, but certainly what David was saying about that's a sort of an, a, almost like analysing, build, building it up into a model. I've got to, you know, there's got to be a model or a framework for me to explain anything. Yeah. And that's probably the introverted thinking side. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. That trade-off, yeah. that yeah. extroverted intuition and then that TI that's kind of narrowing it down, opening yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ideally, and the danger yeah. is when you get too struck, stuck in the extroverted intuition, you can't stop and you keep, oh, that's interesting, oh, that's interesting, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And you're suddenly miles away from what you're supposed to be doing or supposed to be writing about. That <laughs> yeah, the rubs. I've got to be quite firm with myself sometimes. Yeah, which is why I quite like the muse and scribe, that idea of shifting gears and changing focus and being self-aware about it. And um, I think that's really powerful. Well, thank you for that. Okay, so what aspects of the writing process have felt harder or less natural for you? I wouldn't say it's something that feels necessarily harder, but something I struggle to manage, I think is probably more of the scribe element, but where you get to the, the point of revision. And certainly I find with, with poetry, you can, um, you can revise the life out of it. And, uh, but the scribe is a very good critic so the so the critic will the scribe will I think I quite like that scribe muse um, mm. contrast because the scribe will see something that doesn't feel quite grammatically right or it doesn't doesn't quite you know perhaps you should just tweak that a little bit and actually if you're not careful you do too much of that you lose the muse yeah uh, exactly. and and then and you can't you can't get that back you, yeah I mean you can go back to a previous version I think and then and then mm. maybe it's still there. But um, but it's really dangerous to go too long for for me to go too long with the scribe. Mm, exactly. Mm. No, and I think having that framework um, just might help us to know what we need to do, which is go for a walk or um, <laughs> you know get out in in nature or 
you know, do what you're talking about, Kash, go for a walk and take some notes and bring some other elements in. So, no, I think that's a really, really great perspective, Chris. I used to find that if I took an idea and worked through it in my head too much, I'd lose track of my journey of how I got there. And I'd use, mm. lose some valuable elements Oh, that was a good idea, but I can't remember what it was. So I'll write down whatever phrase it is that is getting me started and then leave it all together until mm. I can focus properly. Otherwise, I lose what I would, because once I've thought of it, I don't seem to be able to think of it again unless oh. I write it down. Uh -huh. You know, that's, that's for this organic process. I can't recapture. Yep. The, the seedling once it's got to a sapling. Oh, that's interesting. Car just nodding oh, as an okay. ENFP. That's interesting. So so I guess for you the challenge is finding ways to capture that or have a sense of it so you don't lose it. Yeah, I just I take that the, the germ of the idea that's going to trigger me thinking further and put it down and anything else that comes up related to it I put it down and then mm. come back to it when I'm available to do so Great. and then think it through yeah so Kaz you were nodding you're a close cousin the ENFP INFP you find a similar thing I, I can I can relate to that very much so therefore I, I use the, the notes mm. and it gives the flow so uh, yeah. And then I can leave it, but it's there. It's really hard to, I mean, remember on a later occasion uh, what, what the thoughts were. How so. did I get here? I knew it was good, but what was it? <laughs> <laughs> how frustrating that would be. <laughs> Great. Which, okay. Uh, any any I, other thoughts? I think thoughts? The, the P gets in the way. I put the P aside, you know, and save it for later. And then I always get back to it. And like uh, Chris said, yeah, you lose that thought and you never get it back sometimes. Ah, so you find a similar thing. Yes. Yeah. I put in the chat the title of that the poem, uh, the, the girl, the muse is a little girl, and that's all about that mo that moment which you can miss so easily. So it's okay. a lovely, it's a lovely poem if people want to look it up. And Great, I, thank you. I recognize this long before I ever knew anything about type. So that's interesting. <laughs> mm. Richard, yeah. I, I have this thing where I struggle to like to, to get down to actually sitting down and, and making the space and the time to really focus on it and like clear with all the decks i'll be trying to empty my inbox and tidy the house and have i want everything in order before that perfect moment where i sit down and do it yeah yeah no i think i, I can relate to that too it's um it's almost like um overdoing the the state you need to be in to do the work isn't it <laughs> it's like it's got to be perfect <laughs> yeah no i relate to that any other thoughts? Okay, so we've got a few ideas there. So um, have a think about what cognitive strengths and preferences are your leads and supports in the writing process. So um, we've sort of talked a little bit about that, but any other comments on how you might consciously or how you could consciously be aware of those cognitive strengths in the writing process? Sorry, go ahead. You go, Jerry. Oh, okay, well, I, I'm just uh, aware that my extroverted sensing, which is obviously my inferior function in the kind of classic way of looking at things, uh, is that's in a way that's the key because uh, I'm really noticed through, through lockdown. In the first six months of lockdown, I wrote quite a lot because it was new and I was set, there was a new experience to reflect on. The last six months uh, of the pandemic, written almost nothing because it's very difficult to have a new experience. And so feeding that extroverted sensing, which is not a natural activity anyway, I have to deliberately do it, mm -hmm. um, is uh, it, it's become easier to not do it. Do you know what I mean? It's easy to avoid because of the context that I'm in at the moment. Um, yeah. But really, just aware of that, you know, in terms of the, um, you know, the, the the dominant and then the kind of balancing function, how important mm. that is. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I find as an introverted, intuiting, dominant, I can very easily get stuck in my room and not go out. <laughs> and the, and the pan, and being in lockdown just re, reinforces that in a way. It's like, you know, <laughs> you've got a reason to do more of it and, um, and having to you know, get yourself out for new experiences can be, um, is a great balance, but often we have to push ourselves too. Cool. Catherine, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I've got all sorts of thoughts going through my head, but they're not necessarily related to the questions. <laughs> That's okay, share sure, whatever. There's a, there's... But, when, but I just thought of something which actually the, it relates to the previous question. One of the things I found quite hard when I wrote my first book is summarising it to other people. When people say to you, what are you writing about? It's summarising it in a way they can understand and it doesn't sound too weird and complex. So that mm -hmm. was something that was quite hard for me, making it, yeah. you know, so that was something. But the other, I mean, in general, I worked into a, in a routine, a routine that works for me. And it's a bit like Richard was saying, you know, he was saying you have to clear everything. I'm a bit like that in the sense that, OK, from nine to 11 this morning, I'm going to write. That means I don't even have my outlook on. I have no interruptions. I just do that. And then I might go for a walk in the middle and then I might come and do another hour. And then the rest of the day I catch up with all the other stuff. I had to really be strict with myself and compartmentalize it like that because mm -hmm. writing takes forever. It you know, does. I find, I mean, mm. even writing, I write a more or less a fortnightly blog and it can take me, well, certainly half a day to write a few paragraphs for a blog. Yeah. You know, so I had to be quite, I had to have these routines and I just found that work, writing in the morning worked better for me. I'm sure for other people writing late at night probably works for them. But I think yeah. you, have to, you have to find what works for you. You do. Um, I'm, I'm just struggling with some of these to, to relate that to what my preferences are. I'm, I'm sort of struggling with a little bit. Um, hmm. I think you know, but maybe it's just making space for the muse and the scribe to come together, for example, that, um, you know, I think, you know, creating space, our practice, our practice, you know, making space for it is a big part of the process. And I guess I sort of saw that in the, um, in some of the TETI side of the world too, of, of having a framework and a structure and a place in my yeah. life for it. Yeah, where it's, it's almost trying me. to um, be scheduled and organised in a way that doesn't mm. come naturally to me, but in order to create this output, I've got to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, so we've just got five more minutes for me to round off. Is there anything, I mean, in those other questions, are the ones you can go back to later, we've got a little bit about... Um, you know, which preferences feature less in your writing skills and practice and how could you build them in? So something for you to think about to create some sort of action plan. Um, how your introvert, extrovert preferences play out. And I think that for me was interesting. You could see how I had that, you know, tricycle quad, quad bike version of the extroverted intuition and um, the extrovert introverted thinking. And I think sometimes consciously switching from one to the other. Um, is very helpful and then the other question which I think you might want to reflect on just um, my, my idea was to open up some ideas and, and have you go away and think about these because obviously writing as Catherine said is a long process it's a complex cognitive process so just some tips and tools and resources to to take forward how would you facilitate ongoing shift between the scribe and muse so I think that's anyone got any immediate thoughts on that last question which I think is an interesting one One of the things I'm yes, not an sure initial this... reaction. Sorry, go, on, go ahead. All right. I was just so... going to say, an in, an in... <laughs> <laughs> you go, Jerry. <laughs> well, Catherine's off mute, so you go, Catherine. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, now, what was I going to say? <laughs> uh, oh, yes, I know what I was going to say, um, and I'm not sure if this is scribe muse. It's probably scribe stuff. But the point you made, Terry, about a chat. It's a challenge to reach out for help when you are a bit stuck in whatever way mm. that's yeah you know I'm sort of at the moment I've, I'm sort of in the process of writing a second book I'm a bit stuck uh, with with getting a publisher or convincing the publisher they want to publish it and um, I really ought to reach out to some other people for help on that like yeah. you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no happy to help and then that, that's what I had to do too because I'm I just didn't know what, and part of it also is also how your work gets out in the world and what it looks mm. like, what the partnership, you know, publishing side of the world too. Mm. So, Jerry, do you want to just finish us off with your comment? No, I'll just work, 
And um, well, I mean, all I was going to say was that my initial reaction is is there's a sense of which the scribe perhaps sometimes need to give the muse a bit of a frame to work within, and so yep. those those two energies. So I'm just, I, I quite like the image of the the fr the painting in a frame. That actually mm -hmm. the frame gives the space to the painting. It's not just a thing that holds it and puts it on the wall. Um, so so actually, the some of the scribe more kind of routine based approaches uh, can help to give a space in which the muse perhaps can flourish. Yeah, I love that. I love that frame analogy. That's great because it's um, it's true. I think we can see this the scribe as a bit you know pedestrian or not value, but I think. They're, they're equally, we need both. So it's about how we work consciously, as with all sort of areas of type and cognitive uh, behaviour, how we're more self-aware, more conscious, and can move the gear, like that idea of the gears. So um, great, thank you. Well, I'll just um, share a few final insights. It's just the questions. Yeah, so this is just a summary of um, some final or some tips from what I've learned through my experiences, what I, you know, what has come up in the conversation and what might help you from the literature. So work first from your natural preferences, shift to the less preferred to help you balance and stretch. So that whole idea of the bread, the building, all the research. Um, has shown this same thing that if we work first, particularly in those early stages, the dream and the build, the dream and the um, what's the second one, the dream and the design phase, that's when we should use our natural preferences. Explore our less preferred functions as options to grow. So when you get stuck, just as you were saying, Jerry, you know, for um, extroverted sensing to activate that, get outside more and experience. Don't just work in our heads. Uh, for introverted sensing people, it might be, or for um, or using introverted sensing, it might be relying on what worked in the past. And, and for extroverted intuitives, there can be a tendency to want to be totally original and reinvent the wheel, whereas there's plenty of um, examples to choose from. Using the opposite attitudes for new approaches. So for extroverted work, um, extroverted people, it might be working from internal resources. For introverted folks, it might be talking to people and getting input rather than feeling we have to do it all ourselves. Consciously building in the activities that help us stretch and shift from use to scribe and back again. So it might be you know, building in free writing, building and writing from a prompt, um, going for a walk, writing a reverse outline. That's that um, idea of you know, doing a draft and then working out what the, what the actual outline is. The shift between judging and perceiving, I think, is actually key to some of this, that um, just shifting from the judging, perceiving functions. Another thing is recognising, as I was working through this, just where, you know, type is not the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight functions. We move through them. We cycle back and forward. We, you know, we have our particular preferences. Writing's the same, and we can shift back and forward, move through the cycle. We can use our knowledge of personality to help make more conscious, informed shifts and decisions in how we work. And this idea of work with different cognitive gears across different projects, I really like it. It's in Anne Jantz's book. She has a section on this, um, which really resonated with me, which is if you're writing a few different things, like maybe blogging or writing an article or writing a book, use the different gears at different times so you can be researching one, editing another, drafting another, which is something I want to pursue a lot more. I just think that idea of, you know, being consciously aware of how we're using the gears and, saying right this is my time for this task this is my time for that task and, and and as with you know for me research can be a bit of a rabbit hole and a few people like you've mentioned that David you know research is so interesting we can keep going but if we say right there's two hours here on research and then I'm going to draft this article and then I'm going to you know edit this piece which is part of my book I think that's a really nice framework too if writing is key to what, a lot of what we do and then Peter's great summary of the approaches to writing handout. Have a look at your writing preferences there. It just walks you through, you know, what your preferences are, what the less preferred and just some different um, tips and tools. And also looking at others, I think, also give you some ideas. Um, so, yeah, have a, have a go at looking at your action plan for making writing more creative, productive and enjoyable. These were just some questions there in the resource guide I sent you before. Uh, and just, I think, Part of it might be thinking about what blocks or challenges, self-sabotaging. Think about Jane Casey and Anne Holmes um, drawing on that positive psychology work about our saboteurs. For me, INTJ, it's about competence. So, um, you know, 
for me, I've got to be super competent and, you know, get this perfect and get it right. Maybe that's what's playing into that, getting that perfect space, Richard. You know, it's, <laughs> I've got to, you know, got to have this it's all sorted. It's got to be just right. And just knowing what our saboteurs are and our blocks can really help us. So use whatever type tools um, will help you with that. I've asked you to or encourage you to, to think about what your largest obstacle to achieving your writing goal might be. And I thought that's the way of zeroing in on just one thing you might want to address and just have a make a little list of what your personal strategies and action plans are for increasing your writing creativity, productivity and enjoyment. And just to quote to finish, um, Anne Jantz's great book, which I just read a second time and thoroughly recommend, writing is intensely personal. Productive writers develop strategies that suit their individual personalities and environments, which is very true. So um, any questions? I don't know if we have time for questions, but happy to answer and stay on if anyone wants to chat. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, may these thoughts inspire your writing life to be creative, productive and enjoyable. And if you'd like to connect with me, um, my um, business is Quiet Writing and my website, quietwriting.com and on Facebook, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram is Writing Quietly. Um, and my email address is there too. So, yeah, more than happy to connect um, on any questions from today or share any thoughts. So, thank you. Thanks for a great session, Terry. My pleasure. No, I'm glad it was helpful. And um, Jerry said, great resource guide. Thank you for all the work. My pleasure, because I wanted, I was going, just trying to work out a way of sharing, you know, the reading that I did and the knowledge. And there's, there's, I read, there's a couple of pieces, the one on the resume writing, and I, I actually caught, um, I was thinking I could scan it and send to people if they're interested. So just let me know if you are, because there's some really great pieces in the annals of our psychological type work. That and another piece on, um, developing writers it's actually year five writers but it's a really interesting piece of work based on personality writing so i'm um, happy to help mm.